out here. Actually, Luke, we're going to break into you right now. We're going to go back to the courtroom. The families are beginning to speak uh, in the penalty phase. Uh, let's listen in. This is Joaquin Oliver's family, I believe. This is the right time to let everybody know how special Joaquin was. Papi and Mami decided it was time to have a baby, and Joaquin came into our life. He was the missing link of our family. During the whole pregnancy, we enjoyed every moment of it, including the doctor's visits. August 4th, the best day of our family life, our beautiful dear little boy, big eyes, has arrived, Joaquin. We always had ways to show how much we love him. His dad was always with me when I had to feed him late at night. His sister, whom he called beautiful girl, gave up occasions with her aunt Isabel to stay home and take care of him. She didn't want to miss a moment with him. She was always next to his babysitter, Josefina, who gave him so much love and care during his first year. For the moment he came into my life, he taught me how to express my emotions physically. We hugged each other, we held hands, he blew me kisses and sometimes said, Mommy, did you see I blow you a kiss? He brought me a smile to my face, gave me happiness, and that fits my soul madly. He slept in our bed since he was very little. We cuddled and shared the same pillow. I loved when he came to our room as a teenager at night, waking me up and saying, Mommy, I can't sleep. Can I sleep with you? I felt that even though he was a teenager, he was still, he still had a baby soul. He needed mommy to hug him and hold his hands during his sleep, a feeling that is vivid until today. I relieve and try to find a moment that is only ours. The sleeping will never be the same. He was loved, hugged, and cuddled by everyone his grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins. He missed dearly by them all. It's been four years and four months since he was taken from us, his friends, and his family. We miss him more than words can say and love him dearly. While we will never be the same, we have found a way to deal with, absent, with his absence and be motivated by helping others living with this kind of loss and pain to move forward. I always deny speaking of the way he was taken from us, but today I must let the world hear from me. To accept that he is not physically here with us it still is an issue for me. Why? Because it hurts me very deeply. I must let the listeners feel how painful it is to live with this deep hole in my heart. I can deal with my family gatherings. It is impossible to deal with everybody that was used to get together with, and he is not there. That's done. I can't share happy moments or see pictures with all his cousins, and he's not there. I keep inside an anger that I consciously don't feel, but when I see myself in a picture or a, on a video, it shows in my face putting out my real feelings. Smiling has become harsh. Our life, our life was disrupted suddenly, and now I keep talking to me, to him, in my mind. I have to imagine the moments we were supposed to live and share with him. It hurts to think of preps for graduation from high school, the outfit he was planning to wear. He always wants to plan things. I remember taking, talking about the belt he wanted to wear for the big day. College, 
he wanted to go to Orlando, then to Tali. As a family, we debated the best option, always having great chats about his projects in the present and future. I miss every moment of that. I miss the fluent way we used to talk, while we got ready in the mornings, always updating us about our day, him, his sister, and me. College. He was supposed to graduate this year in business with a major in sports management, which was his plan. All the future ahead of him was taken from us. Getting his first professional job, moving on his own, cooking or doing laundry, everything he was supposed to learn from me, and being part of, the, of his growth as an adult is no more. Joaquin, the young adult, the one who plans to get married and travel the world, and his dear girlfriend share with me going to Africa. All these dreams and could be have been taken away. His friends, I didn't know he had that many friends, girls, boys, little kids. They all miss him endlessly. I feel in my heart the suffering they all endured since the day he was taken from us. They came home devastated, crying. Their lives are changed forever. They share with me how he impacted their life. They say his empathy, loving soul, passion, friendship, the meaning of love, energy, contagious smile. He value of everything, everyone, believe in himself, he stood up for what is right, was genuine to himself and appreciated orders. Our life has been shattered and changed forever. Thank you, Mrs. Oliver. <laughs> Next, Ms. Gersey. You can, you can stay seated there. Oh, this one? Yeah. <clears throat> Let me tell you about my brother, Joaquin. I vividly remember the phone call we received when he was born and everything changed. I went from being an only child to having a baby brother, my very own baby doll. With our age difference and moving to a new country, where both my parents had to work endless hours, my relationship with Joaquin changed. I took on the role of mother figure, more so than just his older sister. Joaquin was energetic, vibrant, loud, confident, strong, empathetic, understanding, smart, passionate, outgoing, playful, loving, competitive, rebellious, funny, loyal, and constantly spoke up when he felt something was, just, was not just. As his older sister, I've always been very protective of him. At the end of the day, even if he was 6'1", I always saw him as my baby. I always felt Joaquin would have a big future filled with, with prosperity, success, and lots of love. When February the 14th came, all those hopes and dreams ended. I will never forget sitting in the living room with my parents, saying how a part of us died that day with Joaquin and what is left of us had to learn to live an empty life. My life without my brother Joaquin has changed in so many ways. It's not just the day-to-day -day things, but also my future, and it hurts me. What happens when we run out of pictures, when we get old and the memories start to fade, when I get married and you aren't there, when I have kids and they don't have an uncle? What happens every single day when I want to call you and I can't? When every single Christmas that every family gets together but ours, when birthdays aren't a celebration anymore, when nighttime comes and thoughts creep in and we realize you are truly gone. This is life now and it hurts. It hurts a lot, not just today, but every single day. I feel an unimaginable void in my being when I think about all those things, when it's not just future events that add more pain to my heart, but the simply daily reminders, like your empty room, driving by the baseball fields, the basketball courts, when I go to call someone on my favorites list and your name is right at the top. When there are certain songs I simply cannot hear, the list is endless. One afternoon driving past McDonald's, I remember being at a red light while Joaquin was telling me how one of his friend's sisters 
was moving away for college. And Joaquin said, I don't know what I would do if you moved out. Well, now it's me that doesn't know what to do with you being gone forever. Joaquin, I love you, I miss you, and I will never forget that smile of yours that could light up any room and make anyone's day better. No further questions, Your Honor. You were listening to Andrea Gersey, Joaquin Oliver's sister. We also heard from his mother, Patricia Oliver. These are the victim impact statements. We're going to hear from 17 different family members as we, be, as we go through this penalty phase of the Nicholas Cruz uh, trial. Uh, the family members will take the stand. This has been extremely emotional. It will only get even more emotional as they recount that their lives have been dramatically altered since that horrible day four and a half years ago. That Valentine's Day at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Um, this is another family member that's going to get up and speak right now. And they haven't identified who this is just yet. But we're going to hear from all 17 victims and their families uh, are going to take this, the mic. This is what happens during the penalty phase. This is, these are called the victim impact statements. And at first, uh, if, I, if I'm corrected, uh, Christy, they, they were going to try to limit how they, many family members. There was talk of limiting, but, uh, but uh, immediately that was uh, tabled. And so it, there can be any number of people speaking um, on behalf of the families. This is we'll Joaquin's girlfriend in. taking the stand right now. Easy. Good afternoon, Ms. Gonzalez. Hello. Are you the girlfriend of Joaquin Oliver? It's a little complicated to answer that because I was not labeled the girlfriend until the day he died. Um, I'll give you the label that we gave each other was always soulmate. That was my partner. Yeah. Have you prepared a statement I have. For to be read in court today? I have. Can you read it for us, please? Yes. Joaquin Oliver. A name etched into the depths of my soul. When I met Joaquin, my life was instantly shape shifted, transformed into wonder. I remember having visions of beings birthed from stars and questioning my belief completely of life. He taught me magic. Joaquin was magic, personified, love personified. He stepped into a room and the entirety of vibration would heighten. In an instant, those around him felt more comfortable in their own skin. He radiated a light so deeply contagious. Just one look into his eyes and it's like you knew you were home on this planet. Joaquin loved to make people smile. He loved to dance down the hallways at school with his headphones on and the wires dangling alongside him. He loved to sit in my passenger seat and sing his heart out. From the Beatles, Cher, Madonna, Led Zeppelin, to Frank Ocean, Playboy Cardi, and Drake. He embraced music, art, cultures of all kind. He was simply just happy to be human. His mere presence wrote his story. You could feel his dedication for love in the air surrounding him. He worked so hard to fulfill each day. He worked so hard in class. All he wanted was to graduate and make his family proud. He wanted to travel and run away with me to Paris. We loved the movie theater. Those employees saw the two of us walking hand in hand multiple times a week. Popcorn, root beer, and cookie dough bites in the hands that were free. Same order, every single time. That Valentine's Day of 2018, I will never forget. We had tickets to IPIC that night, yet another movie date to celebrate the authentic love we shared. 
nothing extra or extravagant, our gifts to each other being ourselves. And of course, the stuffed elephants and yellow chrysanthemums I won't forget the sight of in his grip atop his bouncing knees as he sat at the bus loop bench that morning, anxiously awaiting my arrival. I remember wondering if amongst the chaos later that day, we would still have a quiet night together at the theater. I lost myself that day. I lost my soulmate in the flesh. I lost the voice that filled the atmosphere of my car. It's so quiet now. I lost the friend who understood me most. I lost the excitement to watch him grow up. I lost innocence. I lost purity. I lost the love letters he was writing for me in that fourth period creative writing class. I never actually received them. They were pinned to his shirt. I miss my best friend and the way he made me feel full. I miss the laughter from his lips and the glimmer in his eyes. I miss the light that once lived in me. I see Joaquin in every blade of grass. I feel Joaquin in every ray of sunshine. I won't ever lose the lessons of love he instilled in my being. I thank Joaquin every single day for being himself and giving others the space and permission to be themselves. Joaquin is love. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gonzalez. Nothing further. Thank you, Ms.